is intermediate. I thought we would focus a little bit on balance today because we haven't done balance in a while. Why not? So I have my sticky mat out. Uh, if you're not feeling balancey, you can modify. I'll show you modifications as we go along. Let's start with a nice, easy seat. So as usual, you can sit crisscross applesauce or on your shins, or if you prefer, you can hang out in your Shavasana shape, whatever works for you. And we're just going to drop into our practice, let everything else melt away, and start to create an even breath pattern. So focusing on the in-breath and then the out-breath. The in-breath and the out-breath. And once you feel like you have those kind of even, go ahead and start to extend the exhale slightly. So it's just a little trick to increase lung capacity, creating a little bit longer of an exhale, which is really good for cardio health. I think we're all concerned with our cardiovascular fitness these days. Taking about four more rounds of breath here. Consciously relaxing throughout the shoulders, the hips, let the legs be nice and soft. Hands rest wherever they are. Good, go ahead and allow your eyes to blink open. Let's take a side lean over towards the left. Reach the left hand as far out on the mat as you can. Right arm comes up and over and just take a nice big stretch. So you're looking for, you know, that kind of really good feeling of a stretch through the side body here. Try not to crunch into that lower side. Keep that right hip pushing into the mat. And then all the way over to the other side. So just reaching that right arm as long as you can get it. That left arm comes up and over. Nice, maybe extending a little bit deeper. And then on this one, as we come back to the left, trying to bring the elbow down to the mat and then reaching straight up first, finding that square shape so your shoulders are stacked right on top of each other, and then reaching that right arm towards the far wall overhead. So it might open up through those rib spaces. Those are called intercostals. Good, use your hand to push yourself up and over to the other side that elbow comes down. If you're challenged and the elbow doesn't come all the way down, you can use a block or whatever you have handy. Reach up and over. Good. And then come back through center. And since we're going to do some uh, balance work today, we want to get some stretching in through the back of the legs, the hamstrings. So let's find a head to knee pose so you're going to extend that right leg nice and long left foot comes into the inseam there we're going to turn so that your heart is just aiming to the outside of that right knee and then fold down over the leg so it's a tiny bit of a twist as you melt down over the leg i'm using my left hand just to prop me up onto the ankle or calf or whatever you have there if you're really open through the back body already, you might come all the way down to the knee, but odds are you're floating somewhere in between upright and all the way down at the knee. One more breath here. And then using your hands, pressing up, we're just going to take this, it's called Janu Sirsasana to the other side, just means head to knee. And then, so the inseam comes, or the sole of the foot comes to the inseam, turn so that you're just past that knee and fold down, bringing that right arm maybe to the outside or the blade of the left foot. Head is super duper heavy here. So this is probably doing double duty for you. You might be getting a stretch 
up through the kidney region of the back. That's a good thing. And then maybe across the outside or underside of that leg. Use your breath to pull you down closer to the leg. All right, go ahead and unwind that. And we're going to find our way to our tabletop shape. So hands and knees, knees right underneath the hips, hands right underneath the shoulders. We'll take three cat cows here just to get started. So pushing into the mat, rounding through the upper back, tuck the tailbone, hollow out the belly. And then as you inhale, because you're going to make space here, you're going to lift the hips, drop the belly, lift the heart, and then exhale to round. Tuck the chin last, inhale to lift. So you're probably moving a little bit faster or slower than I am, depending on your breath. And then finding your way to that neutral spine. So zip up the belly, create that length from shoulder to hip here and reach your left arm out in front of you. So starting right off with that balance, right leg is going to reach behind you. So opposite arm and opposite leg. You can do the same one, but it's a different shape. And then notice if you arch through the back to find the shape and then pull that belly up and in. Nice. Left hand comes down, right knee comes down. Zip it up one more time, find that length, and then extend the opposite side. So work to find a bit of a softness in the shoulder. If you're not really invested in this pose, you can really sink into it and just kind of fake it, right? But if you push away from the ground and zip up the belly, you're getting the most core work here. Good. Hands come down, knees come down. We'll take one round of cat cow to reset here. Cat and cow. And then back to neutral. You can do that exact same thing again, or if you want to advance, you're going to work your way into that table or into that plank shape and float your, we'll float the right foot first. Float your right toes off the mat. That might be enough. If you wanna work a little stronger, a little, little bit more, come up onto the fingertips of the left hand. So don't keep, or keep the hand on the floor, just lift up slightly so you can't put all your weight into it. Right foot comes down, left fingertips come down, and then right to the other side. Left toes reach behind you, and then up onto the right fingertips, which you can't see because they're behind my left, but same thing, just tensing the fingers. Both hands come down, both feet come down, push your way up and back, downward, facing dog, head is heavy, walk out your dog here. So activating the core right off the bat is really good for balance. It kind of gives you that frame of reference for where you want to aim for. Let's find stillness in this down dog. Bend the knees, come up, down the toes. Heels lift off the mat a little bit higher and then reach the tailbone up and back. Heels come down. Nice. Take a look up towards the hands. Walk, step, hop, however you want to get there. I'm going to walk on this first one. Forward fold, top of the mat. Head is super heavy. Bring your arms around behind the back. Interlace the fingers. Reach them up towards the sky and melt over the legs. You can bend the knees here if you like. Otherwise, bringing that nose towards the knee. And then inhale, reach the arms down to the mat, find the half lift. Exhale, step back, right foot coming to that low lunge. Right knee comes down, release that back foot, hands reach up towards the sky. So hips are square. Actually, bring your hands to your hips, square them off first, and then sink down into the shape, and then reach the arms up. You might create a little V shape. Both hands come down either side of that left foot, curl the toes under on the right foot, root down in through that left heel as you sweep right leg off the mat and then step it next to the left foot, melt over the legs. Inhale, half lift, step back with that left foot, low lunge, square off the hips first, sink low, really looking for this stretch here and then reach the arms up. Maybe look up. When you look up, you create a bit of a back bend, which is great. You're gonna root down through that front heel. 
both hands come down either side of that front foot. And again, we're going to float that left leg up into a modified standing split and then take your time with placing it next to the right foot, melt over the legs. Inhale, root to rise all the way up, sweep the arms nice and high. Hands come to heart center. So staying right where you're at, I'm gonna to turn so that you can see me. A little bit more core work here to find that balance. Hands stay at heart center. You're gonna root down through the feet and just float your left foot off the mat. So your left hip hitches up slightly and your ankle's gonna do its little wiggly thing. I'm gonna rock around a little bit. And then over towards the left and then just hitch up on the right side. Might do its little wiggly thing. Beautiful. Both feet come down, sweep the arms all the way up, and then melt down over the legs, forward fold. We're gonna add on here. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, stepping back high uh, lunge here. So crescent warrior, back heel lifts, reach all the way up. Nice, take your time. Push into that right heel, melt into that left leg. Perfect. For this first one, hands come down to the mat to give you a little bit of extra float that right foot off the mat and lift the hands off the mat, finding your way to that warrior three. So you're floating, can't really tell on camera, but your hips are square to the floor. Those hip points are pointing straight out and you can either point your toes or flex them. It's entirely up to you. Nice, and then just lightly put the fingers back on the mat and bring the right foot down and melt over the legs. Inhale, root to rise all the way up. We know where we're going, a little bit faster to the left side, float down. Step that left foot back, high lunge, crescent warrior, reach up. Take your time, push out of that left foot, sink down. So the more you drill down through that right heel, even press that right big toe into the mat, like kind of dramatically, the easier it is to float onto that leg. Fingertips come down, left leg floats off the mat, straighten the right leg, and then work yourself into that warrior three. Nice, beautiful. Both hands come down and then step into that forward fold and melt over the legs. Inhale, root to rise, reach the arms all the way up. Exhale, fold all the way back down. We're going to step back into our plank shape, top of your push up. Both feet go back, hands are underneath your shoulders. For this first one, yogi's choice, if you like, you can bring the knees down and then lower between the arms for a little baby cobra. So all the way to the mat and then lift into a little teeny tiny back bend. And then melt down. Curl the toes under, either using the knees to come back halfway or coming right into that plank and then back into your downward dog. So the feet can be a little bit wider if you need the space. You can bend the knees, head can be heavy, whatever you need here. Nice, all right, walk those toes so that they touch. Right leg reaches up behind you, push away from the hands, even look forward towards the hands and then step that right foot in between the hands into that crescent warrior. Reach all the way up. Hands come to heart center. Turn and look over your right shoulder and then hinge and hook that left elbow over the thigh or the knee. And then sink low into the hips. You'll really feel that on the outer hip. Enjoy this little twist here, a little break from the balance. And then inhale, reach all the way back up. You know where we're going. We've been here before. Fingertips can come to the mat if you want. Use them to support you. Float the left leg and then find your way to that warrior three. Nice. And then melt down over the leg. If you're working into an advanced practice, you're going to grab onto the back of the ankle. Otherwise, bring the fingertips to the floor. Your standing split or supported standing split and then step left foot next to right, melt over the legs, sweep all the way up and open. Nice, and then melt down. We're coming right back through that vinyasa, both hands to the mat, step back, modify or not, lowering down, 
maybe coming right into your up dog and then your down dog. Nice. All right, left leg is going to reach up. So reach that left leg up, push the right heel down, look up towards the hands, pull that knee in towards the nose as you step between the hands right into that crescent warrior. Reach up. Both hands come together, heart center. Turn and look over the left shoulder and then hook. So you're trying to press your palms together and you're trying to open up that top shoulder. Push back through that right heel. Nice. So if this shape doesn't really work for you, if you're not a fan of it or whatever reason, you can just bring one hand down and use that as leverage to twist yourself up. Left hand comes to the thigh. This shape isn't really for, not for everyone. Inhale, reach all the way back up. You know where we're going, either right into that warrior three or using your hands. The hands can float behind you or they can come underneath. Just be careful not to create too much of a bend into that lower back. Zip that belly up. Nice, and then using your hands or not, finding your way to that standing split. If you're coming to standing split, playing around with maybe left hand behind the ankle, maybe right hand, maybe reaching the right foot up higher. And then using your hands, stepping both feet down, about hip width here, melt down over the legs, taking a break. Find that bind with the uh, peace fingers on the big toes, and then melt down over the legs, bending the elbows out to the side. So you'll really feel this up the back of the legs as you melt. Keeping the bind on the toes, find a half lift, straighten the arms, lift the knees if they're not already, and find that flat back. And then release the hands. We're going to heel toe those feet together, find your way into a chair pose, sitting low, hands come to heart center. Okay. Sit back, sit down, hands at heart center. You can reach them out if you want to work advanced. It's entirely up to you and then melt over the legs, step back. You can come to your tabletop or to your plank, it's up to you, finding your way through that vinyasa. If you don't wanna take it, you can skip it. Lowering down for that chaturanga up dog, and then into your down dog. All right, here we go, keep moving on. Right leg reaches up, step between the hands. Crescent warrior is where we're headed, reach up. And then on your exhale, draw the hands down, heart center. Inhale to twist, exhale to complete that twist, and then hook that left elbow. Find that little twist. Nice, all right, from here, nobody likes this balance, but I like it. We're going to look down at that right toe and then either slide or step that left foot to meet the right for that chair shape. Ooh, wait, twisty chair. Nice. So take a minute to clarify. Wonka doodle things happen. The knees go wonky, the hips go wonky. Sit low. And then we're going to reach all the way up. Nice. And then fold straight back down. Good. Shake it out by bumping it. All right and left. Whatever you gotta do. Inhale, half lift. And we're stepping back with the right foot this time. Into that crescent. Reach up. Hands come to heart center. Turn, look, hinge. Find your way to that twist. Push out of that back leg. Look down, root down through that left big toe. And again, either slide that foot or step that foot. I slid it so you can see what that looks like. Into that twisty chair. Nice. Good, inhale, reach all the way up. Find a little back bend at the top, and then exhale, fold. Good, half lift. Let's step back with the right foot, just about almost to your high lunge, but not quite. Both feet face forward, but it's like you're standing on railroad tracks, so there's a hip space between them. And then inhale, reach all the way up. So you're in a, we call this split stance, right? Look up, 
interlace the fingers and then hinge and reach for the edge of your mat or the far wall. Nice. So you should really feel that left leg becoming very strong here. And then exhale, you can bring your hands to either side of the foot, your leg, anywhere you've got here. Maybe you even reach the fingertips down to the floor. Keep those hips square in the back as flat as possible. If you have to round into it or if the floor is too far, you're right here. This is perfect. Nice. Beautiful. Inhale. We're going to play with that standing split one more time. That right leg is going to come up. You can hang out here. You can wrap your hands. All right, we're bringing that right knee with us when we stand up, lifting the shoulders, coming all the way up. Right leg comes up. All right, so you can hang out here. We're going to grab onto that knee. If you like an extended leg, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do that today. All right, so we're holding onto this knee. We're going to grab with the left and reach that right one out behind us. Look out over that back arm. Beautiful. All right, this is where it gets tricky. Right hand comes next to the left foot. We're stepping back into an easy twist. So you're stepping back into that crescent. Right hand comes to the floor. Left hand reaches up. How oh, was that for nice and tricky? Both hands come down through your vinyasa. Let's give those legs a rest. Please inhale all the way up. Exhale, fold. Nice, beautiful. All right, we're gonna step that left leg all the way up and through. And then the right leg is going to reach and meet and melt over the feet. I did not mean to make that rhyme. It was just a happy accident. Fingers come around the toes and melt over them. Bend the elbows, find your deepest forward fold yet. Inhale to that flat back, zip up the belly. Release the fingertips and step that left leg back. Find that railroad shape and then lift all the way up. Interlace the fingers, release the index and thumb. Pull the biceps back by the ears and then hinge and reach for the far wall. Nice. So you really feel your core here. You really feel your whole core, including the back part of your core and then go ahead and bring the hands down, melt over that front leg. See if you can relax into it. Try not to overextend through that knee and really um, grip with that back of the leg. See if you can find a little bit of stillness here, a little bit of relaxation. If you engage the quad and pull the kneecap towards the hip, it'll give you a little bit more room to fold. Playing around with that standing split, rock forward, float that left leg. Again, you can bring feet off or hands off the mat if you like. So if your standing split is here, it's still a standing split for the record. It doesn't matter where it is. All right, we're bringing that knee with us all the way up, bend into that right leg to help you pull that left knee. Whoops, it's okay to fall out of it, just come back. Right hand comes to the knee, left hand reaches back, look out over that left shoulder. And don't worry about it, if today's not your day with the balance, it's not a big deal. And if you're on a surface you're not used to, so if you're on carpet or something, it's going to be much, much harder. Left hand, this back one is coming inside that front foot as you step back. So hinge, sweep that arm forward and step back, all one movement. Left hand comes down, right hand comes up. So that's what we mean by functional movement when we're doing things that mimic stuff we do every day to strengthen those patterns. Beautiful. Both hands come down. This time we're stepping right back into our downward facing dog. So just lift that right foot back. Right into your down dog. 
Walk your feet out a little bit wider than hips and bring your knees to the mat and sit back into your wide-legged child's pose. You can wrap your, or bend your elbows and then stack your head on top of the backs of the hands. If this fold is too much for you, you can make two fists with the hands and then have a higher base so that you don't have to fold so deeply. We're going to be here for a few minutes, so find a shape where you can settle in Taking about three more breaths here. And then start to walk yourself back up. Slide those knees together. And we're coming all the way down onto our belly here. So just lower yourself to the mat any way that you want to get there make sure you're on the mat hands are underneath the shoulders so strengthening the core includes the back your elbows point behind you your index finger points forward and your thumbs point towards your body from here you're going to push into the mat and just lift the head heart shoulders to about the bottom rib so squeeze the elbows together really light up your traps Right, so along the back, right underneath the arms and into the middle of the back, right around the kidneys. And then lower down. So we're targeting right here, these muscles here. They're like those big wings, okay? So we're going to do that one more time, just like that. So the more you squeeze the elbows together, push the heels of the hands into the mat and lift the head, heart and shoulders. And think about that back bend, the more you'll light up through those traps. It's really important with all the work we do in front of computers. And then lower back down. And then for this one, move the hands just slightly out from the body. And we're coming into our up dog here. So the tops of the feet are on the mat. You're going to push up, straighten the arms. You can hang out here with the thighs and the hips on the mat if you like. If you want to extend it a little bit deeper into this shape, you're going to lift all the way up keeping the elbows soft and look up. That's an up dog. Let's find our way to our downward facing dog. Roll over those toes, heels come down, and then just stretch out that back bend. That should feel quite delightful. You can nod your head yes, shake your head no. Push the heels down, push away from the hands. And then walk your feet a little bit forward, come down onto your knees, and then sweep the legs out in front of you. Or wherever it makes most sense. So the legs out in front of you, they're maybe touching, maybe about a hip width. I like mine a little bit spaced. And then flex those toes back towards your face. Reach the arms up as you find length through the spine. And then hinge and either grabbing onto your pant legs, your shins, your ankles, or if you have it today, you might reach the feet. You might not. It's quite all right if you don't. Keep that back nice and flat. So if you start to round into it, back out, you know, that flat back, so even coming back further, hinging. Finding that shape. And 
I know you guys like to keep your cameras off and that's okay, but if you have a reflective surface that you can, you know, maybe a mirror or something you can position yourself in front of or a TV screen that's kind of a little reflective or a window or something, it helps with your form when there's not somebody there to correct. Nice. All right, using your hands, we're going to slowly come back out of this forward fold, bring the feet to the mat, and just windshield wiper your legs from side to side. Just kind of shake all that out. All right, make sure you're centered on your mat somewhere. And then we're coming to our supported boat pose. So just lift your shins so that they are tabletop we call this right you can um you can flex your feet that's a lot more work or you can point your feet whichever works for you all right so whichever one works for you then keeping the arms there or maybe floating them next to the knees palms up beautiful think about lifting up through the heart this is navasana boat pose nice so you can use your hands at any time. You can bring them to the mat, or if you wanna work stronger, you're gonna keep them lifted. We're just going to march, right? So left foot comes down to the mat, and then right back to tabletop, and then right. So try not to round and scoop back into the back. You wanna keep up lifting with the shoulders. We're only going to do three sets. This is two, and then three, and three. Nice, grab the knees, roll onto your back, bring them with you. Give yourself a nice big hug. We're not quite done with that series. Hooey, all right. So coming back up, rolling yourself back up, finding your way into that boat shape, fingers on the mat, legs in your tabletop shape. We're going to bring this right hand across and over to the left. Nice. And then bring that right hand down, left hand comes across and over towards the right. And then back through center, roll it down, give yourself that hug. Whee. All right, and now our very slow yogi bicycle. So extend that left leg long, right knee stacks. Hands can come behind your head and just maybe lightly intertwine them. Bring your left elbow to your right knee, right elbow sticks to the floor. And then switch it out very slowly back to the other side. Bring that right elbow to the left knee. So careful not to swivel the leg to meet the arm. And then back. It's like a four count. And to the left. And to the right. If you're modifying that bottom foot, comes right to the mat. To the left. You can even keep it bent if you like. To the right. And to the left. Nice. And then back through center, lower down. Take that hug one more time. Ooh Stretch that left leg nice and long down the mat. Stretch that right leg long down the mat. Reach up overhead. Take a nice big stretch here. Beautiful. All right, one more little core exercise. Right knee comes in, give it a nice big hug. Float the left foot off the mat. Right leg reaches up towards the sky. You can use your hands to help you here. Lift your head, heart, and shoulders off the mat. And imagine, so your belly button, and then about two inches below that belly button, that whole like area there, you're going to push that towards the mat. And then from here, you're just going to switch out the legs. Inhale to lift, exhale to switch. Switch, switch. Nice, right, left, right, left. And then both knees come in, head comes down to the mat. You can stretch it out, reaching nice and long with those legs or bring the feet to the mat, which I like to do, and just take a nice windshield wiper to the right and the left. Ooh -wee. 
All right. Nice big twist here to release all of that core tension. Cross your right leg over your left and then reach both of those knees over towards the left side. They probably won't come all the way to the mat. Your arms are out in a T-shape. I like to use my left hand to grab onto the right leg. Just give it a little bit of extra and reach the right hand long towards the wall. So again, this twist, you're going to have a nice short choppy breath. Just try to find as much length as you can as you exhale. The inhale usually takes care of itself. Good, go ahead and unwind, use your hands, your feet, anything you need to. Unravel those legs, reset the hips, and then cross the left over the right. Arms come out into the T-shape to begin with, and then swivel over towards the right. Maybe that right hand comes on top. on back through center unhook the legs take any movements that feel intuitive or good to you again maybe that happy baby maybe you just rock from side to side whatever feels super awesome here and then we're finding our way to our shavasana our resting shape finally left leg reaches out towards the edge of the mat right leg reaches out towards the edge of the mat and then lowering down finding your way hands are next to you palms are up shoulders together and down your back but with ease so if you feel like you're really working to hold the shoulders together underneath you maybe you just find an easier shape there so ideally there's nothing underneath your head here but if you find this is not comfortable, you can use a small blanket or a towel to lift the head slightly. And then melting down onto the mat, beginning to let everything else melt away. Simply becoming an observer of your own body. Imagining that you're standing over yourself, looking down with the unique ability to feel how you're feeling while you're looking at yourself. what seems tense. See if you can relax that muscle. Where are you holding on? Try to let go. Let the teeth separate. The tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth.
bringing intentional movement to fingers and toes. Starting to lengthen your exhale. Purposefully refilling with the inhale. Slowly moving your way towards one side or the other, taking a few moments in this space between complete rest and whatever comes next. Letting your head rest on your arm, maybe curling the knees up towards the body. using your hands to help you, finding your way towards your seat, whatever that means for you. Letting your shoulders relax, the eyes remain closed, hands resting in your lap or on your knees. Taking a few moments to re to tune into the practice of balance, right? So balance is dynamic. It's different from side to side, day to day, even moment to moment. It's something that we do without thinking most of the time. And when it's gone, you really notice it. It's a culmination of many, many small muscles and bones and ligaments and tendons all working together for the greater good. If there's any disharmony, your balance might be thrown off. Change in environment, change in shoes, whatever, whatever it might be, maybe no shoes. one of those things that we don't consciously practice until we're on our yoga mat. But maybe throughout the day, lifting a heel, lifting the toes, shifting from side to side, finding little teeny tiny ways to challenge your balance, making you a little bit stronger in the long run. And then not being too attached to how your balance shows up to you because, like I said, it's different from time to time. So if you don't have it now, eh, all right, we'll get it next time. Perhaps bringing hands to heart center if you choose, maybe bowing your head if you like. Thank you so much for joining me on the mat today. I will see you next week. Have a fabulous weekend. Namaste.